Hey guys, this is Mr. V and this is Apes Review Video Topic 4.8, Earth's Geography and Climate. So what do we mean by geography and climate? So um, geography is going to be um, the natural and human borders, um, but also what plays a big role in climate is going to be geology. Okay, So that's going to be whether or not these rock formations allow for wind to pass through, or there's, there's going to be a lot of sunlight and things like that. And so you know, sunlight is, of course, the big factor, um, but there's going to be other things that can affect this besides the uh, weather and the climate. right? And so the difference is weather is your short term. Climate tends to be your precipitation um, and your uh, uh, amounts of um, of sunlight or, or temperature um, over a long period of time. So that's an important distinction to make, first of all. And so what you notice here is that the thing that drives a lot of this is going to be the heat at the equator. So we mentioned that in the last one, um, talking about heat and how that moves and causes uh, different uh, wind patterns before, as well as seasons. Well, that heat not only does that, but it uh, gets distributed from the equator through those ocean currents all the way to the rest of the world. So that's why places like um, New York, uh, Europe, um, Spain, stuff like that, those places can be livable because of that distribution of heat. So that equator doesn't just keep it all there, the currents and the winds push it to the rest of the world. And that ends up um, allowing many places that are temperate be livable rather than just that equator being the most livable part with all the sunlight that it gets. And so a big uh, example of this would be uh, mountains with the rain shadow effect. So when you have uh, the mountain uh, or a mountain close to a coastline, um, typically on the windward side, um, that's going to be the one on the left here, you'll see oceans over there and that, that air will bring in moisture with it. And because the mountain's in the way, it's going to cause a lot of condensation of water vapor, and it's going to cause one side of the of the mountain to be full of precipitation, rain, and a lot of greenery. And then as that air goes up, it dries out, and then it falls down. And then as it as it stays dry and it descends down, that brings with it a lot of uh, uh, arid air, and that's going to be an area that's no longer got any moisture, so it's going to be more of a desert type area. That's what we call the leeward side. Um, so that's more of a drier area, more desert-like conditions. So here you can take a look, and here's a real rain shadow effect. So this is a uh, uh, an island in the Hawaiian uh, Mount in the Hawaiian island chain, uh, Mauna Kua, uh, and so. Right here, you can see which side would be the windward side and the leeward side. If you want to pause and take a try at it, this would be a good time for that. And then we see right here that the windward side is going to be that green side and the leeward side is going to be that drier side. So you can see that the trade wind actually comes in from that northern portion of the picture and it brings in all that precipitation. And as that uh, mountain of koala um, comes down, you're going to end up with a lot more drier air and that's going to look like a desert on that side. So um, very visible real life example. Okay, so here's some other resources if you'd like to learn more about rain shadow effect and um, the Earth's uh, climate with geography. So thank you very much. I hope that's helpful, and I hope this was helpful.